Welcome folks to a sunny day in Bath and today I've come out with a mission basically to test out these two lenses which I've got from TT Artisan. I bought these with my own money, uh, they haven't been sent to me and I've actually bought them with the purpose of using them uh, with my best R2 which is an M mount system so both of these lenses are obviously M mount then. So like I said I've got the 90mm which is uh, I think it's a 1.25 uh, aperture lens and then I've got the 50mm which is a 1.4 aperture lens and again like I say they're both for M mount. So what you have to do with these lenses in the box you get like a focusing scale where you have to sense stand two meters back from it and at a 30 degree angle you've then got to line up your rangefinder patch to uh, your lens. So how you do that basically is very easy. They supply you with a little screwdriver with each lens and you adjust these three screws on the back and then you move them back and forth until when obviously the lens is on the camera and you're stood two meters away at a 30 degree angle. Um, you just adjust it until your two meter scale on here matches your rangefinder app and then you'll know your lens are aligned with your camera. It's dead easy to do. It might sort of, when you first get it out of the box, it looks a bit daunting, but it is dead easy to do. So this is the sort of first outing with these two lenses. Um, I've got a roll of Delta 100. I wanted to stick with a film stock that I know and trusted um, so that all I'm really relying on is the lenses to do their job with the rangefinder patch. So um, yeah, so like I say, we're out with Bath today. I've already taken uh, 11 shots on this already, just of the kids at home and stuff like that. So I'm going to try and get rid of the rest of these uh these shots out today in bath so yeah i'm going to stop waffling and i'm going to get on with it so i hope you enjoy these images So that's about 10 shots taken now with the uh, 50mm on the Besser R2. Um, so I'm going to swap over to the 90mm and I'm going to see how I get on. Now what I am finding is because I usually, when I come and do uh, street photography, I'm usually shooting in 35mm format. So shooting in 50mm has been quite a challenge and I'm sure that 90mm is going to be even more of a challenge. But I'm sort of enjoying the challenge today. It was a beautiful day. It's probably a bit bright if I'm honest. I'd like to have come out here a bit earlier, but you know, that's what it is. 
but um, yeah, it's beautiful out here today, absolutely lovely. It's probably about 26, 27 degrees, it's real nice. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to walk around and sort of capture people wandering about or sitting in coffee shops and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the 90 mil on there now and we're gonna see, uh, see how this one turns out. And fingers crossed, all these images turn out that I've taken today. Fingers crossed. So that is it for the outdoors bit of this video. I'm gonna get back home now and uh, develop the film. I've got a roll of Cine Steel uh, 200, well I've shot a 200 ISO, uh, the black and white, XX black and white film to develop also. So I'm gonna do both of them. Uh, but yeah, I've shot, um, like I say, about 10 on each of the 90 mil and the uh, 50 mil. Um, early sort of conclusions are the 50 mil looked quite easy to shoot, it didn't really, uh, interfere with the um, didn't really interfere with the uh, the rainfinder patch, but with the 90 mil, it probably cut off 40 to 45 percent of the rangefinder window, um, so you, you couldn't really see what was going on in the bottom um, sort of right-hand corner of the frame. So that's a bit of guesswork, um, and it weighs so much. It is the heaviest. Uh, thing that I have in my camera bag and that is lenses and cameras um, it is by far the heaviest and it doesn't it's no way balanced on the better R2 um, however it's nice to have that extra reach um, over 50 mil so yeah I'm gonna get back home now get them developed fingers crossed they come out fingers crossed they're sharp and fingers crossed that I have uh, set the um, um, I've adjusted it correctly uh, so that the focus and the rangefinder patch match up so hopefully that's all worked out but for now I'll see you soon okay so as you can see uh, back in the uh, sort of studio now for want of a better word for it anyway but um, I just wanted to talk about um, the lenses for a second while the film dries so I've already developed the film and it's hanging to dry at the moment and I'm going to get on and scan it in a bit now um, today's video, as I mentioned earlier, was all about testing these two lenses here out, which is the uh, 50mm um, TTR artisan lens and the 90mm TTR artisan lens. Um, I bought these lenses with my own money, I'm not sponsored by them, and this is not by any means a technical video to go through pixel peeping on the screen about how sharp these things are or anything like that. This is simply 
two lenses that I want to test out before I go to Glastonbury next week. So I've already got my 35mm Voigtlander lens for my Besser R2 and I wanted a 50 and a 90 so after having a good look around I, I settled on these two TTR tan lenses. Um, one of the reasons why um, was although they look they're really well built they're manual lenses i like manual focusing anyway uh, but the other thing is as well they do a amount for um so amount for the m mount lens to l mount body so um, that's 39 pounds and i've got that so that basically i can put this lens on my better r2 as well as my lumix um, s5 mark ii so um, that's another reason for for buying these lenses um, and like i said they've got pretty good reviews to be fair um, and they are reasonably priced I would say so the 90mm lens um, which I'll talk about first is this retails in the UK for about £849 um, that's on a mark so it's not the cheapest thing in the world but um, you know that's what it retails for so in terms of the sort of unboxing experience it is obviously i've already had these out of the box um as you can see i'm just in the process of editing the video which you've already watched so this is the video for for this and basically um what you get in terms of sort of when you buy this is you get the box obviously which looks like this it's a lovely box it's really well sort of sealed together it's a real nice experience when you pull in the uh, the box lid apart and what you get in the box is um you get a warranty card you get a uh, bit of plastic which is what the lens was in um you get the the drying uh, silica gel or whatever that stuff is and then you get a lovely cut out where the lens sort of sits and nestles lightly now the two things that i wanted to mention that you get, which is a bit different or a lot different from when you say buy a uh, an L mount, say I bought an L mount Panasonic lens or a Sigma lens for it, I would get the box and I would get the warranty card and all the rest of the gubbins that come with it. But these two items I wouldn't get. One of which is a screwdriver, this little tiny um, gold screwdriver. And the second thing is this sort of card. So what you have to do with this um, and these two lenses is you need to um, line up the lens with the rangefinder patch in the sort of viewing window. So what I mean by that is inside uh, the obviously the window that you look through, uh, the viewfinder, you will see there is what is called a rangefinder patch. Now on the top of this uh, Besser R2, you have a switch here which basically switches between um, 75, 35 and 90 or 50 mil. And when you look through the viewfinder, you get framing lines based on what you've chosen. So in the 75 mil, the lines will change and they'll be slightly tighter than 35 mil um, or 50 mil. And you basically, the lines will change inside the camera to give you what is gonna be inside your frame when you take the shot. So, and then in the middle of that, you get what is called a rangefinder patch. And it's just a small patch, which basically, when you've got a lens on the end of your camera and you're focusing it, what you'll see is two images. And when these two images sort of slowly come together and they overlap each other, then that means whatever you're focusing on is in focus at that point. So what you then need to do is you need to set your camera or your lens to your camera's rangefinder patch so that when you're focusing it's not wildly different uh, when they line up so essentially what you're doing is you've got a list of instructions on the back and this looks massively onerous i understand that but i promise you it isn't this is actually a very simple process when i looked into it and i thought oh my god can i be bothered with the faff of going for this process um, I thought, no, I'll give it a go. And actually, it is a real easy, um, an easy thing to do. TTR sound have been very, very good at supplying this very simple um, instruction uh, sort of card to do it. So on the one side, you get your instructions. And then on the other side, you get your focusing strip. So essentially what you do is you'll get your lens out the box. You then obviously take the end cap off and you fit it to the end of your camera. 
what you then need to do is to, I just laid this out on the table and excuse the, the ripped bit at the bottom, that's really because I've actually used this one. You lay this flat, so I applied some sellotape to either end of it and down the side so it was completely flat. And you stand two meters away from the end of the card at about a 30 degree angle. And what you're looking to do, basically, is when your lens on the focusing scale is set to two meters, so I don't know, hopefully that will thing, but as you can see down here, when it gets to two meters in the center, what you should be looking at is where it says focus in the middle and that cross, the rangefinder patch should be in line with the lens focusing point. So the two overlap perfectly and that's what you're looking to do. If it doesn't, what you then need to do is on the back of the lens, you have three screws and that's where this lovely little screwdriver comes in. You just simply undo them. Don't undo them too much because I did that with one and the screws are absolutely minute. So if you undo that too much, the screw will drop out. Now, thankfully it just fell sort of inside the lens and I just turned it upside down and it fell back out again. But it was a bit of a, a wake up call for me because if you lose one of them, I can imagine that's probably gonna be, uh, well, a pain in the ass. But um, you just so you just sort of loosen them up, I would say. And then there's a ring that they, they obviously are holding down and you move that ring either clockwise or anti-clockwise, depending on where on your scale, where on your scale, um, this is out of focus. So if it's below, then you go one way. And if it's above, you go, you go the other way. So that's what you do. And um, I have to say that my lenses uh, came out of the box pretty well, um, pretty well together. So I didn't have to do a massive amount to them. I just tweaked them slightly. So the whole point of today really was to go out because like I said, I'm going to Glastonbury with these two lenses and my Voigtlander. And I wanted to make sure that the lenses um, were focused right and that I'd set them up right. Um, out the box, they were pretty good, like I say. So um, so on the bottom, this is the, the little ring round here that you, you would adjust. So the lens itself, if we just talk about the 90 mm lens for the moment, the lens itself is an absolute beast. And I would say that it's probably too much of a beast for the Besser R2. I would say this lens favors a larger camera. Um, something like the Panasonic would probably, it would look pretty good on, on, on that camera. So what you, what I'll find with this is this lens here weighs, um, weighs 1,013 grams. So that is huge. That's more than my Lumix and the lens on the front. And it's certainly more than my Bessel R2. So you will find that this is heavy, lens heavy, basically. So your camera is always wanted to, to dip down. So it is not a light lens by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and the reason for that is that basically all of this, including the lens cap, um, the lens cap, which is here, and the lens hood, which sort of slips on the end there, are all metal. The only bit of plastic on this lens is the uh, the rear cap, which obviously you don't you don't take with you if it's on your camera. So it is just a bit of a beast, and just bear that in mind if you're looking at this uh, lens to buy. Now, the other things I'd say about this lens is is a 1.25 to f16 lens, so it does open up. Um, a lot more than than a lot of other lenses and it is very cheap for a lens that, that you know will open up to 1.25 um uh, from the reviews that i've seen like i said i'm not pixel peeper uh, by any stretch of the imagination so the, but the reviews i have seen is that anything below sort of f2 um starts to get soft in the corners and the image starts to fall apart a bit in the corners and then obviously when you get past the bad f f11 onwards you start to see diffraction in this lens which to be fair you, you see in pretty much every every lens so just to bear that in mind um but i'm not really planning to shoot this less than f 2.8 to be honest so um so i'm not really bothered about that so like i say the the lens like i've just mentioned is all, all metal construction um the one thing i don't like about this lens is the fact that tj artisan is great they've, in, they've included a uh, a lens hood um but the lens cap screws onto the end of the lens hood and that to me is just a 
pain in the ass to be honest I don't know quite why they've done that beautifully made but I don't know why they've done that so basically this just sort of slides off the end and then screws into the into the top like most lenses do and then you've got got your lens so um, yeah this the, this lens like I say it's about 850 pounds for this um, and it's just a it's just a beast um, when it's actually on the camera what I found was that it was quite difficult to line up the focusing plane on this and the the rangefinder um, patch when you're trying to line the two the rangefinder patch was hardly visible um, so trying to focus this uh, you know to get the two to line together was quite difficult in certain lighting conditions um, the other thing is, as well is with this lens being such a beast I mean this this you know the filter thread on the end of this is 77 mil and although it looks absolutely dreamy look at through the end of that I mean that is just hypnotic looking through the end of that bad boy I mean it's probably one of the most beautiful bits of glass I've ever seen to be honest just looking through the end of that is absolutely gorgeous but with it being the size that it is, it covers about 40 to 50 percent. Well, it was not 50 percent, it's probably 45 percent, I would say, of your viewfinder um, on your um, on the Bessar R2. It covers about 45 percent of the bottom left hand corner. So, what you're uh, effectively doing is when you're looking to frame your shot you're only able to frame the top right hand corner and sort of the middle portion of the image whatever's in the bottom left hand corner you're just going to have to guess that it's it's in the frame when you want to take it because you can't see it when you're looking through um looking through the viewfinder because this bad boy gets in the way so aside from that um, we're going to have a look at the images in a minute, so hopefully they come out sharp. And hopefully I've set this this lens up right. But aside from that, it's you know its weight is probably going to be an issue. Um, the viewfinder app thing is is a bit of a you know a bit of a pain, but it's it, you know you can overcome it. And just the screw on lens hub uh, lens cap are the only sort of real things that I don't like about it. But everything else I do. It's like I say, it's, it's just a beautiful lens. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's that one. I'll put that one to one side and then I'll just quickly go over the 50mm lens. Now this 50mm lens, I would say is absolutely ideal for my Besser R2 and it would be the same for a Leica or any other M mount cameras. They do do this in, in both of these in other mounts, um, but obviously the ones I've got are, are M mount. So it's just the right size it, it's a good weight this is about 399 grams um, cost wise this one is about 430 pounds so it's a bit more reasonable um, f-stop wise you get f uh, 1.4 up to f16 again i wouldn't be you know if i'm looking for a sharp image from corner to corner i would probably go from f 2.8 up to f11 i should imagine in the middle of that somewhere is going to be a sweet spot so um yeah just bear that in mind again the same rules apply when it comes to setting this this uh, up you've got your three um screw points on the bottom in the box you get exactly the same things um including the focusing uh, thing and the screwdriver so it's exactly the same three screws on the back you just move it slightly don't don't undo the screws too far because if you lose a screw you're gonna have a bad day so just bear that in mind um, but yeah you just undo them slightly this moves around and then you uh, obviously just keep doing that with your focusing strip and your camera until your focus plane and your uh, rangefinder patch line up but this is a 49 um, mil uh, filter thread on the end of here um, it's a lot more of a traditional lens I, I would say uh, the only thing I wouldn't say about this is the, the lens this is the lens cap and it just sort of slips over the top like that I should imagine after you've done this quite a few times the sort of felt around the inside is probably going to wear and then this is probably going to get quite loose so you may end up losing that at some point that's the only thing i would say about that and then the other comment is you don't get a lens hood with this one you get a lens hood with that i don't know why they haven't offered a lens hood with this um it's not too much of a, of a problem for me because i do have 49 mil screw on uh lens hood from a, another lens uh so i'm just going to use that on the end of here so this this one here is like i say i think is more friendly with this in terms of sort of viewing um through the uh, the viewfinder you get no loss of um you get no loss on your on what you're you're framing up you don't get any loss with, with this lens so it doesn't interfere um at all with the the viewfinder 
Um, so yeah, so that's what I'd say about these two lenses really. We're, you know, am I pleased with them so far? Yes, I am. Um, obviously the images will definitely uh, dictate whether I'm uh, absolutely happy with them because it's all going to just come down to image quality at the end of the day because uh, that's what these things are for. Um, so yeah, so I hope you have enjoyed the images that, that you probably, well, you will have already seen at the start of the video. Um, and I'm going to give a bit of a rundown after the film is scanned and uh, I've had a chance to look at them myself. So I'm going to get on and scan these uh, images now and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so I've scanned the images in. I've used my Epson V750 uh, with the trays that it came with. Now, like I said before, that's not the best way to scan 35mm film. Um, generally, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you, don't, you can get a sharper image by using your digital camera and a macro lens drum scanning or using a dedicated 35mm scanner as long as it's a decent one and not a real cheap one because real cheap ones are rubbish um, but yeah something like a plus tech um, something like that I think it's the 8100 AI or SE or whatever they are but they're dedicated 35mm scanners so um, so we're going to take into account a little bit that scanning may have um, just reduced the sharpness slightly but having said that um, what I've done is obviously the images you've seen they're not by far my best work and, and basically you've seen the majority of the roll good bad or the ugly um, the other bits from the rolls are just family photos and stuff like that um, where I was just trialing the lens and, and um, you know just seeing how it how it was just in and around home so this is the first time I've sort of been out out and about with it and sort of done some sort of vlog or whatever with it so I just want to talk about a few of these like I say um, these ones aren't great so this one is a, is wouldn't be a keeper for me um, but but what I, what, the reason why I've just pulled these ones up is because I wanted to talk about um, this one here was taken with the 90mm lens, so uh, this one here. And what I found is this writing on the name place for the house is so sharp, it is just brilliant. So I'm really happy, especially with this image here, that um, I've managed to get the, the rain, pine, rain finder um, patch and this lens to line up correctly so really happy with that one in terms of sort of sharpness um, in and around this this word and you'll see a lot of the images I've chosen I've chosen them because they've got wording them and, and they you know the crisp line and the edges of the the sort of lettering uh, really picks out the sharpness of the of the lenses that we're using here so you know just sort of corner to corner I'm really really happy with the sharpness of the, this lighting lens on this sort of first image, although the image is utter rubbish. But anyway, on to the next one. So the next one, um, I just wanted to capture this sort of guy um, playing the guitar and then this old, this old sort of guy in the background sort of sat watching him just chilling out in the sunshine. I really like that shot. But the reason why I picked this shot up wasn't really so much because of these guys. It was the fact that the actual church or that the um, uh, cathedral or abbey or whatever the hell this is in the background is just... The detail that this lens has managed to resolve on the film is just brilliant. Um, so yeah, I was really happy with that one, although you know the actual shot itself is you know wouldn't be a keeper for me. So on to the next one. Again, this is definitely not a keeper, and there is a little bit of a story behind this one, but the reason why I picked it out was because again, the wording on the homemade cakes and the calf sign is just, you know, if I zoom into that, um, is so sharp you know just the homemade cakes but it is so so sharp um but the little bit of the story behind this one is these these girls were sat the three of them sat just in this coffee shop window sort of laughing and joking and drinking coffee and i thought it was a real nice shot the issue was they clocked me even though this was taken with the 90 mil lens and i should just say that the one before this one was also the 90 mil lens this one was the 90 mil lens um i was stood quite close to it um if I'd have gone further back, I'd have actually been stood in the bus lane, which is never a good idea. So um, what I had to do was to sort of pretend that I was focusing over here somewhere by putting my camera over there and focusing, and then sort of quickly turning the camera across and just almost hip firing. Obviously, without a viewfinder or anything on this PESA, I didn't know what the hell I was aiming at. I just sort of had to just point and shoot and hope for the best so that's what I did so although the image is rubbish and didn't capture what I wanted to capture uh, with what I actually saw happening um, the reason you know just looking at the sharpness of it really highlights to be that again this light more lens is so razor sharp uh, in terms of sort of this so that's that image 
Um, the next one on, again, this was the first one that I actually took with this 90mm on the Besser. Again, the image isn't brilliant, uh, but again, just the writing and the sort of frame, uh, you know, the, the window and what it's picked out, actually the, the scratches on the window, and or at least I hope it's scratched on the window, not, not the... Uh, and not the uh, the film, but it is you know it was on the window, um, and just the detail inside and stuff was just I I I you know just again just says to me that yeah this lens is is proper sharp. So again that was a ninety mil lens. Next one on um, again this this isn't my best shot at all. Probably needs just re leveling slightly. Um, this was taken on the fifty mil lens, so the smaller little fifty. Um, and what I liked about this one, or what I picked out on this one, is just again just the lettering and the lettering on the window, and just the, the sharpness around the edges of stuff. And they, you know, just it just shows to me that this lens is, is just a brilliant bit of kit, especially on that Besser R2, and I'm sure it would be the same on a uh, on a Leica. Um, at the end of the day, when you're talking about a film camera, you're literally talking about the glass and the uh, and the film itself, because the camera really all it's there to do is to open and close a shutter and act as a vessel for the for the film really and to obviously hold the lens so it doesn't really do anything <laughs> other than that so sharpness is is um is uh determined by obviously camera shake is one thing uh quality of the lens is massive and then also the um the film that you've chosen to put in the camera so you know this is delta 100 is a very sharp film anyway uh, but these lenses have just just really helped that along so yeah again not a keeper but just showing what what that 50 more lens is capable of um this one uh, again th this is rubbish it's not a keeper at all but the reason why i've chosen this just to just to talk about quickly again it's just the lettering the lettering on the window here and just along the top um, you know, and even some of the stuff inside, like this light bar, uh, you know, and some of it, it it's just, you know, just the, the stuff is picked up, the detail around the doorway with the cracking in the paint and stuff. It's just really sharp. So really happy with, with the quality of this. Again, 50mm lens, brilliant for that. So now we're getting on to some of the stuff that I would put in the keeper category. Um, again, this one, it's not my best work, but I, I like it. Um, this was taken on the 90mm lens, yeah, the 90mm lens. And again, just the, 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 you know, the sharpness and the edges of these sort of um, ribbons that were fluttered around in, in, the, uh, in the wind. And again, because I was able to um, open this lens up, um, in terms of aperture, you know, like I say, it does go down to 1.25. I think this shot was taken on about uh, 4 f4, I think it was somewhere around that. Um, but it just means that when I'm shooting with an I a low ISO film like Delta 100, which is a 100 speed film, I can capture this handheld and still get a, um, a you know a sharp a sharp image in terms of you know what we've got there. So yeah, really happy with that with that shot and just the way that that multiple lens has sort of rendered that. Uh, next one on, this is probably one of my favourite of the day, I just love this shot. Um, this was taken on the 50mm and what I like about this shot here is I just like the guy sort of sat doing his own thing and then the guy inside on his phone, on his computer, obviously doing some business sat in the coffee shop. And again, just looking at the, the, the lettering, you know, all this lettering down here and coffee there and coffee and, you know, this, this whole thing is just a sharp image you know when helped by massively by this uh, by this lens in fact i would go as far as to say that these two lenses here are probably sharper than that voigtlander 35 mil uh, that i've got which has really surprised me to be honest with you but again it might be because this is maybe it's not quite uh, lined up with with the um with the lens when i bought the, the voigtlander lens you don't get the focusing strip and and you know you haven't got the options with that um or certainly not what you've got in the lens box to be able to, to be able to do what you you can do with these two lenses so really like that shot probably my my favorite of the day next one on this is just dead simple there's not really any action i'd like some people inside and a bit of reflection and that sort of thing but i just liked you know just their their sort of set up in, inside the, the the shot there with the uh uh, you know with the bakery items and bits and pieces but again the reason why i chose chose this this photo is again just the lettering and the lettering along the the, 
the you know the bottom and just the fact that it's picked out the you know the the wording inside is really well resolved and everything so again this was the the 50 mm lens uh, that took that shot so really really happy with with that one um, next one along, this one again was taken with the with the 50mm lens, I really like this shot, um, again I've chosen this as an example again just because of the lettering, the lettering really helps show how, how sharp this lens, these, you know, these lenses are, but I just like the fact that this old guy was sort of sat on his own business outside on his phone and just uh, letting the world go by and uh, yeah, doing what I really wanted to be doing to be honest with you, but yeah, that one there is... Uh, you know, I, I like that image, but uh, again, it was more chosen because of the just details of the, the sharpness of the lens. Um, and again, this, this one here is just a very simple shot. Uh, it's a small house on, on sort of next to a bridge, and it really is a real small house. But I like the fact that they had their um, uh, their uh, mat out, outside just drying. There was a few things in the window and stuff like that. Um, and again, it's just a... You know, this was taken on the 50mm lens and it's just a sharp image. It's a sharp image. Um, and again, this one here is probably one of my favourite again. Uh, just a barber inside cutting this guy's hair. Taken on the, the 50mm lens. Um, and again, just looking at, you know, coming down here and looking at some of the lettering and things and, and some of the smaller bottles, which is picked the wording up on. Um, you know, and the, the Wi-Fi symbol there, just how sharp that is in the open side and everything. And I just liked it because there's some stuff going on and I, you know, I really like like that image. Um, but again, just the, the fitting more lens really, really helping to uh, to make that, that sharp, really. Um, and then this one here, again, this is a real simple shot, uh, but I, I like this shot. And again, just, I think this was taken on the 90mm lens, um, but again, just looking at the edges, of the uh, um, you know this sort of material that's hanging down here it's just so sharp the edge is is great um, and that's it really so they're the lens they're the sort of few photos I just took just to show off these two lenses and, and what they can do with this better R2 and again that would be the same for your Leica M6 or whatever other Leica ever takes an L mount M mount lens um, you'll see straight away that you'll, you'll get good results and I'm really happy with how I've managed to, uh, uh, to set these up and just the images that I've managed to capture um, with these two lenses so I'm really really happy with them so conclusion is um, definitely going to be keeping these two um, and I'm definitely happy now and more than confident to be going to Glastonbury and hopefully getting some great footage and some great pictures with this Besser R2 and hopefully a couple of large format shots as well um, if I can get the camera out and, uh, <laughs> and sort of get a shot with them obviously uh, I can be fairly discreet with these but he can't be discreet with a 4x5 camera so um, so anyway so I'm really excited for next week and go into that and I'm really excited to uh, to put together some videos uh, from that obviously it's going to be difficult because I don't want to get um, a YouTube strike for uh, for um, all the music that's going to be blaring in the background of the video so I'm just going to have to be careful on how I um, how I put them together but anyway that's for next week for this week I hope you've enjoyed that little video um, or little video it's a long video but I hope you've all enjoyed the video um, and if you have a like to it would be amazing and a subscription to the channel would be even better um, please leave a comment below I do read them I do get back to everybody even if it does take me a few days so I do apologize for that um, but yeah hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching